La la. La la la. Hey friends, just a reminder, this year's Christmas contest uh, deadline is December 25th, 2021, 6 p.m. Three winners will receive a one-hour lesson with yours truly, the saxophone oracle. One beginner, one intermediate, one advanced. All you have to do is record yourself playing a Christmas tune. Um, it could be with a backing track, without, it could be video or just audio. Send it to me, the saxophone oracle at gmail.com and I will pick three people to have a one-on-one -on -one lesson with yours truly via Skype, FaceTime, whatever it is. All right, good luck everyone. <laughs> Hey friends, I'm the Saxophone Oracle. This week we're going to talk about playing with tuners. Should we be practicing with a tuner? You know what I'm talking about. Little gadgets like this where we turn it on, we play the note and there's, a, there's lights and there's a little thing that goes back and forth and goes crazy unless we're in tune and you know we have apps on our phones for that. We have all kinds of fancy different kinds of tuners like this with smiley faces, with thumbs up, with green lights, whatever it is, you know what it is, it's a tuner. So should we be playing with these? And uh, I'm talking about this because I've seen a few posts recently in forums where people are talking about playing with tuners and struggling to get the happy face or getting the thing to stay the way it is and everything, you know, beginner, beginner players. And the truth is, no, we shouldn't be playing with these. Forget it, get rid of it. Um, there's basically two reasons to play with a tuner. One, if you're playing a new saxophone that you've never played before, or you've had your neck recorked and you need to find out where to put the mouthpiece, you know, in the optimal place for it to be most in tune, then a tuner would be handy, because sure, it'll help you get your bearings. The other reason, yes, we might use it from time to time, is to pick up on tendencies we have, right? If we play a scale, the entire range of the horn, and we have the tuner in front of us, and we're passively looking at it, we might notice that, oh, I'm playing a lot sharper than I thought I was up high, or maybe I'm pinching too much, or whatever things like that. But for daily practice, it's, there's no need for a tuner, okay? Absolutely none. And the reason is, is because tuning, playing in tune has everything and only anything to do with ear training. So we have to work on our ear training to play in tune. The tuner, I mean, there's a couple things. First of all, the tuners, those are made for fixed pitch instruments, right? Maybe if you're a piano tuner, uh, they, have, they have special ones, but you know, it's for guitar players, bass players. They plug into it. If you pluck an open string, you're going to get a note, and it's not going to waver. Either it's in tune or out of tune, and they're super precise, and you move that little nut, and it changes and everything right until it locks in, and then you know you're in tune on your open string, and that's it, right? So saxophone, we have all kinds of other natural variations happening with the reed vibrating, yada, yada, yada. So these things are far too sensitive for saxophone players. Yes, some of them you can calibrate the sensitivity so it's you know not always going crazy. But at the end of the day, all it's telling you is that, okay, yes, your note's a little sharp. Yes, it's a little bit flat. But it's not teaching your ears to recognize it, and it's not teaching you that when you recognize it, how to manipulate it up, down, whatever you have to do to adjust the pitch. So if we're sitting there, especially a beginner, look, a beginner has all kinds of other issues. Air support, embouchure, all kinds of things that are gonna make it go out of whack and not possible to play note to note spot on. You know, first of all, there's that. But, but second of all, I mean, if you're a beginner, and that's all you're looking at. You're going to be just driving yourself crazy for, for no reason because every note is going to be out of tune. And even if you manage to get the thing spot on, you're doing nothing to teach yourself to hear intonation and to adjust. OK, so how do we work on tuning? Well, it's all about ear training, right? It's all about getting 
our ears more developed. And when we're starting out, we don't have developed ears, right? So yes, naturally we're going to play way out of tune on top of all the other reasons, poor air support and things like that. But, you know, first of all, saxophone, if you have good air support, right, it is a relatively in-tune instrument. We hear people talking about, oh, saxophone's inherently out of tune. Yeah, there are, are certain notes that are you know, notoriously sharp or notoriously flat, things like that. But it's not dramatic. If you play with a really great air support and you play the entire range of the horn, it's going to be pretty well in tune. It's going to be really passable, even if a note's a little sharp or a little bit flat. So the first thing is getting that together. And as you get more sound together, as you get your breath support together, as you get more comfort and control in playing the instrument, it's going to become more and more in tune. And you're going to start hearing it. Your ears are going to hone into what is in tune or not, right? Simple as that. So how do we work on intonation? How do we work on hearing if we're in tune or not and, and getting better at it? Well, first things first, we start with one simple note and we start to hear whether we are flat or sharp. And the way you do this is playing with a fixed pitch instrument or with some sort of drone. So I'm gonna play a concert B flat on the piano, G on alto sax. And you're gonna listen for little vibrations. The more out of tune you are, the more it's going to vibrate and be dissonant. So. So I'm a little bit flat. So I'm going to push in a hair. See what that does. All of a sudden, the vibrations are gone away. So if you're not sure, move it in any direction. And does it get better? Does it get worse? Does it get to the point where it's passably hearing no vibrations, little to no vibration? So that's step one, just dealing with one note at a time with a fixed pitch instrument, with a drone. I'm sure you can get a drone on, on YouTube or something that's just playing one consistent note, and focus on just being able to hear whether that one note is in tune or not, and don't worry about the rest. Once you become comfortable with that, how do we work on our intonation? Simply by playing still with fixed pitch instruments, so playing your scales along with the piano or getting a recording of a piano playing scales and doing it note by note, playing with other musicians, playing in ensembles, playing with musicians who are better than you, trying to learn from them how it works, playing with musicians who are weaker than you because maybe someone has worse pitch and then you're gonna have to learn to adjust to make them sound better. But it's all about here, right? If we're looking at a tuner, it's not teaching this anything. And so, look, in music, a note is not a note is not a note because we, we have a tempered tuning system. We're not playing pure scales. If we're playing a natural major scale, then we wouldn't be able to have 12 keys, right? So every note in our modern system that we use is slightly adjusted, slightly out of tune, so that we can get all 12 keys. So, you know, this is an advanced concept, you, 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 and you don't really need to know it, but just, just so you're aware of it, right? If you're playing, an E flat. And if that E flat is the root of the chord, it may be perfectly in tune on your tuner. But depending where that E flat is in relation to the chord you're playing, even if it's right in tune on the tuner, it's not going to sound in tune with the musicians around you. Okay? So if the E flat is the root, it's gonna, you're going to have to tune it one way. If the E flat is the third of a B major chord, E flat, D sharp, then you're going to have to make a slight adjustment for it to be in tune. If it's the third of the minor chord, so E flat is the third of C minor, then you're going to tune that E flat differently than if it was the major third of the B chord. Same thing if it's a seventh. It's, tuning is very fluid and it's very relative. So it's all about training your ears to know when you're more or less in tune. 
right? If you're playing in a big band saxophone section, for example, and say you have one of those little tuners that you can put on your saxophone and you're looking at it the whole time, and you might be perfectly in tune with that happy, smiley face looking at you the whole time, but if the lead trumpet player behind you is playing 10 cents sharp, then what good is that? You're out of tune because the lead is what it is. So you have to be able to adjust. And that's what tuning is all about. It's constantly changing, it's flexible, it's relative, right? So play with a fixed pitch instrument, do things like this. Get a piano, sit at it, use the sustain pedal, note by note. Okay, good. You're happy? Work like that. Get yourself a drone and play intervals off it. See if it's in tune or not. Start working on honing in your ears, right? And this, this is something that does take a long time and it's gonna come with experience and hours and hours and years of playing. The more we play, the more we clue into things and the more things become apparent. So what you think is in tune now, the player you are five years from now isn't gonna think it's in tune. Right, like I, I played in a high school concert band and we were quite good and we would tune up and I thought we sounded amazing. Our parents thought we sounded amazing. If I listen to recordings of that band now, it's unbearable. Like one time in university, I went back to do a little clinic and work with the musicians, it was great. And then I figured I, I would sit in the flute section for their rehearsal just to, you know, for the sake of playing. And it was impossible and it's not like when I was that age, I was any better, right? It was just the tuning was so awful. But my ears at that time were just like, oh, okay, it's fine. And then now it's like unbearable. It was excruciating to, and, and impossible to play in tune because everyone around me had a different concept of pitch, so I didn't even know where to go. It was awful. So all of these things are gonna change. It's fluid, it's flexible. So work on playing with fixed pitch instruments, work on all the important things like support, evenness of tone through the entire saxophone, getting your embouchure, getting all that stuff together. Leave the tuner, sure, if you wanna see, if you're curious how sharp you are or whatever, then put it on. But really the best thing you can do, take the app off of your phone. If you've invested in something like this or a really fancy tuner, what you do, you gift wrap it up really nice, put a bow on it, give it to your guitar player friend, your bass player friend, and when they open it up and say, wow, thank you, that's so generous, how can I ever repay you, you say, you repay me by every once in a while, come over to my place, we're gonna play scales together in unison. And that's it, enjoy your tuner, just come and let me work on my pitch with you by playing scales together with you in unison. That's it, that is tuning. I'm the Saxophone Oracle, that's what I wanted to talk about this week. So tuning, using tuners, sure, once in a while, but it's not gonna help you in any way, shape or form. Uh, play in tune. Right? It's, it's all about training your ears. So uh, please remember to like, share, and subscribe. If you like what you saw, if you have questions or comments, drop below, shoot me an email. I'll try to address them in any future videos. Thank you for continuing to watch. I wish you all happy practicing, a great week. We'll see you next Tuesday. Bye for now.